Hi there, my name's Alex, and this is Tank Tested. Now, I know we're outside, but this is still an aquarium video. So, why are we outside at all? Well, that has to do with Rachel O'Leary. See, just a few minutes ago, on April 28th, she challenged all of us to set up an aquarium using just the aquarium, the hardscape, the plants, and the fish that we have on hand. And lucky for me, I've got a pretty nice supply of hardscape in my backyard. So we're gonna start with that because it's getting dark, and then we'll go inside. So right here, this little humble pile of rocks will be the hardscape that I use for this aquarium. The rocks in this little pile are petrified wood. And if you're a loyal fan of Tank Tested, you may recognize them. They were in one of the first aquariums I uploaded to this channel. They've been sitting outside for about a year now, collecting mud and rain, so I think it's time we use them. So I'm going to move all these rocks inside, and then we'll talk about the aquarium, which was inspired by another YouTuber. <sighs> Bucket of rocks. Shockingly heavy. So these make up all of my uh, aquascaping materials for this demo. Plus, in here I've got some uh, used aqua soil. Uh, from another tank that I broke down. I've also got some white sand, again from a tank that I broke down, kind of in a little container here, and I've got some wood. This wood is uh, spider wood that I broke off during a demo for a live stream I did maybe a month ago or so. Uh, looks like this. I was, you know, a little bit flustered trying to get a big stick and a little tank, but now I've got all these little pieces of wood to work with. But none of this is useful if I don't have a tank. And that leads me to the second YouTuber that I want to talk about today. So let's get these rocks out of the way. Oh gosh, they're so heavy! Now let's move on to the tank. This is my little Lazy Susan. Uh, it's a little bit loud, but it'll help me scape and film at the same time. So, this tank, I built myself. I cut the glass. I siliconed it together, and I did it with the help of Joey, the king of DIY. Now, I did it long before I knew Joey. Um, I did this back in 2016, and it was actually the first build that I did on my YouTube channel. But it's a video that you guys never saw. And that's because when I first started Tank Tested, I wanted to do a science aquarium YouTube channel. So I actually made a video on the assembly of this tank that was all about the physics of how glass breaks and how you're able to etch glass and that causes a fissure line that you can actually break the glass with. It was a really detailed video and after I made it, I looked at it and I said, gosh, what is the overlap here uh, of aquarium and science channel? I mean, both of those are kind of tough niches to find a home for on YouTube. Why in the world am I combining them and making it almost impossible to ever get a following? Plus, Joey kind of has done that. Uh, Joey actually really was a major inspiration for really every part of setting up a YouTube channel for me. Um, you know, I think I started watching him in 2012, which is when I first got my, uh, my first aquarium after college. Um, up to that point, I had taken a break for college. When I got back into it, I like went online, was checking out YouTube, discovered this guy named Joey, uh, and he was explaining how to set up and build aquariums from scratch. And I found it so fascinating. And it's honestly, it's a really special thing that years later, um, I, I know him and I respect his work and I think he respects mine as well. In fact, I know he respects mine because I'm gonna show you one more thing. Oh gosh. So this video on my laptop is Joey, obviously, and actually up in the corner is a little clip from one of my videos that I shot of Joey and Dustin of Dustin's Fish Tanks um, at Aquashella. And I didn't know he was gonna post this, so when this came out of his mouth and I was watching, my jaw dropped. It was pretty magical. And Alex makes uh, some actually, he's one of my favorite aquarium YouTubers, so while you're there, subscribe. Yeah, I mean, that made me really, really happy it was something that I didn't expect to happen. Um, I honestly didn't even know that Joey watched my videos or any of the videos that I'd made, um, but it meant a lot to me. So this tank largely was inspired by Joey and the King of DIY uh, in his old videos back in the good old days when he was making glass tanks and cutting the glass himself. 
So this is the tank I'm going to use for my setup tonight. It feels appropriate. It's kind of a rustic lo-fi tank that I built myself with black silicone, um, which weirdly enough, it's the same silicone that I have in my 150 behind me, which, you know, I thought I was never going to have a black silicone tank anymore. They're hard to find, but you know, I have one. So I'm excited about that. Now, the thing is, I'm going to be building this scape on my little Lazy Susan here so that I can look at it, rotate it, and you can see it as well. But glass is pretty weak uh, up and down. It's very strong vertically, but it's pretty weak up and down. And I need something to support it. So I'm going to introduce another hobby that I have that I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel, and that's woodworking. So let's see if I have my piece of wood. Ah, it's over there. It's just out of frame. I'll be back in a second. All right, I'm back. So we were talking about woodworking and I have this piece of walnut. Uh, this is a live edge piece of walnut. Um, on the back, you can see the bark. So it's a pretty thin piece. I cut it off of a big slab that I was building a table with. Now it's not structurally super strong. It couldn't support this tank with water, but for the purpose of this video, since this is kind of on the fly, what I've got on hand, I'm gonna use this as my table underneath the aquarium. So let's put the aquarium on my table. Let's put my piece of wood on my Lazy Susan. And then the aquarium on my piece of wood. And now, hopefully, there's enough tensile strength that my aquarium won't crack uh, when I put all my rocks in it. So now we can skate and uh, fingers crossed that everything holds up. I don't know why it wouldn't. This tank has held water for years, but you know, I don't want to push it too hard. So let's get started. Actually, before we go any further, I want to talk about this tank. Uh, it's seven inches front to back. It's pretty narrow. It's 24 inches from side to side and it's 10 inches tall. And uh, back there, that's a whole bunch of rocks that will eventually go in that aquarium. Uh, there's a weird setup with some clamps and everything. That's how I shot a video that'll come out later, but uh, we're focusing on this tank, so let's get to it. All right, so here's the thing. I, I have no game plan for what this tank is gonna look like. I, I literally have not put a single rock in this aquarium. So setting up an aquascape on the fly, it's a little bit stressful. One of the other rules that Rachel set out in this challenge was that I needed to also use plants that I had on hand. Knowing what plants I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have something a little bit bushy uh, and not much else. I think I wanna have one side of the tank be relatively empty. Maybe use some of these sticks to bridge the gap, kinda of like branching into an almost empty section of the aquarium, and then have a rock pile over here. That feels that feels right to me. And because I grew up reading English, I read from left to right. Uh, and I imagine most of you do as well. So instinctively, I tend to set up my scapes going from right to left. Now, if I wanted to be adventurous, I would set it up going from left to right. But doing it on the fly like this, I think the right solution is to kind of go with what I know really well. And that's going from right to left. Left to right. There we go. Words. Uh, so let's start out with uh, our hardscape. So this is actually my favorite piece of stone in the whole collection, this uh, petrified wood. And I'm not confident it's gonna fit. Um, let's see. It does, oh, no, oh gosh. Oh no. Oh. I mean, that technically fits. Um, let me show you how tight a squeeze this is. I'm not sure that this this will work in this orientation at least. Um, here, let me show you. That That's a tight squeeze. I mean, there's not a lot front to back of space to, to work with. So, gosh. I mean, I do like it, but I, that's probably not the orientation that this rock is going to live in if it lives in my aquarium. I do love this stone. It's the biggest piece of uh, petrified wood I've got, but gosh, I mean, there's like maybe, maybe a quarter inch of room to spare. That's, <laughs> that's not really enough. Plus it blocks off this whole area, which means that there's no place for aqua soil to go. 
So I think that even though this is probably my favorite piece, it's not gonna live in this aquarium. At least not in this orientation. Maybe I could orient it a little bit differently. Um, that's, that's actually an interesting point as well. So petrified wood, it's a unique rock in that it has a directionality. Um, I'll show you on this camera. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So it's got a directionality and that's the, uh, the grain of the wood because this was originally wood before it became rock. And it's really hard to aquascape this because those lines uh, fight what you're doing. So historically, what I've done is I've set them up where all the lines are going in the same direction. You can actually see that in the tank that I showed at the start of this video. I did that with that entire scape. But with this tank, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe, maybe what I want to do is something that's a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more random and actually use the, the frankly, the bad sides of these rocks as kind of a, uh, a very angular, angular structure and kind of have it be just a random rubble pile. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I am going to create a rubble pile with the nicest rock that I have. Um, that's what this video is about, right? Chaos? Yeah. So how do I want to do this? When you're scaping, there are two different approaches that you can use. One is to lay down your substrate first and then add your hardscape. The other is to add your hardscape and then lay down your substrate. The advantage of laying down your substrate first is you've got something to lay your rocks on so that you can put them in a little bit more precarious angles. It also stops this, the bottom of the aquarium from getting scratched. The advantage of not laying down uh, substrate is that your, sub, your uh, aquascape sits a little bit lower in the aquarium. So when you're talking about an aquarium with not a lot of height, having, that or having those hardscape pieces sit low in the aquarium could be advantageous. Uh, a lot of the scapers that I really respect actually scape with an empty tank first. So I think that's what I'm gonna try as well. So knowing the chaos that I'm going for, see normally I would show, I would show this side of the rock, but maybe, I want to show this side that doesn't have quite the same texture. Um, I'll show you this way. So this side of the rock that doesn't have quite the same texture as this side of the rock. So I think I'm going to go with the ugly side with all of these rocks, which I can't believe I'm going to do. That's an insane thing to do. But I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. This is very different than what I did literally last night. Last night I did a live stream on this channel where I used three pieces of this wood in a little terrarium. And I had the directionality be an important component of that scape. This time I'm, I'm going the exact opposite direction, which is kind of exciting, actually. Yeah. I really want to thank Rachel, uh, Rachel O'Leary, for suggesting this. This is a really fun project that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Uh, so if you're not already subscribed to Rachel, go subscribe to her channel. And actually, if you're not already subscribed to Joey, the king of DIY, uh, go subscribe to him as well. I don't know why you would be subscribed to me and not them, but if you are, uh, fix that. Subscribe to all three of us. Now, there is a flat side to each of these rocks, which is kind of distracting. But I think I can work around that. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. I don't know if it comes across. Maybe I come across it very flat. But I'm really excited about this. This is a cool project. All right, I need to just dive in. So I think you guys are gonna see the back of the aquascape for just a second. Um, while I just see how much space these rocks take up. Ooh, ooh. Look at this big rock. So this is gonna be the biggest one in my tank. Huh, huh, huh. So this is still pretty big in the aquarium. Probably a better orientation for it. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, it's not that exciting, but I'm pretty excited about it. Now, if I could angle it up a little bit, that'd be even better. 
Can I angle it up though? Yeah, I think I can. I don't really have any materials to do that with though. This is the real problem with this challenge is I don't have any like little rocks to support the big rocks. I don't really have stuff to work with. Maybe this little rock would be a good one. This is gonna all have to get real cut down because otherwise this video is just gonna take forever. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna talk you through what I'm looking at right now. So the thing that I'm objecting to is how flat this top surface is. It's distracting when you have a flat horizontal surface. So what I need to do is make sure that that surface isn't horizontal. And the question is, how do I do that with the materials that I have? I don't think I've made it better. Yeah, I made it a little bit better. Is that pretty though? I don't know that that's pretty, but we'll go with it. Let's just see what happens. So then I think we want to just kind of start creating a pile up, right? It's a little, a little bit of chaos. Ooh, there's no way that I'm not going to have flat surfaces on the top. It's just an impossibility, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Not without. You know? There you go. I've set it up so there's not a flat surface. So we'll do that again. Good, good, good. We'll figure it out. We'll be fine. Maybe I want a little bit of rock like that. This is insane. This is a crazy way of setting up an aquarium. Um, but what's the worst that can happen? It's, it's a crummy tank? That's not bad. This is gonna be a bad scape. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it won't be. Um, it's probably gonna be a bad scape. That's okay though. It's okay for the tank to be crummy. It's allowed. It's setting it up in like an hour. So it's allowed to be kind of, kind of crummy. I want something like that? I don't. I don't want something like that. That was a bad idea. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the two flat sides are what's really getting me here. This is the bit that's that's breaking my ability to, to create something that's dynamic. Those flat sides don't look natural, even though they are. Um, that's actually how petrified wood breaks, but they just don't look right. You know, it just doesn't look like something that exists in nature. And I think that's kind of the magic of petrified wood is that it doesn't look like what stuff looks like in nature. But I kind of want it to look sort of like what looks like and what nature looks like, at least a little bit. All right. I'm regretting these decisions. This was a bad choice. Should I abandon it? Should I abandon my declaration that I'm going to not have everything be, be horizontally aligned? Oof. What I'm kind of doing right now is setting up what feels like uh, a cichlid tank, weirdly. Like, it doesn't feel like what an aquascape looks like. It feels like I'm creating rubble, habitat for fish that I don't own and will never own because I don't really do cichlids. Also, do I want to use this anywhere? Because this could be very striking. 
especially if I'm not orienting it that way. I think I should, actually. I'm gonna undo a lot of what I just did. Um, Cause this feels like it wants to be in my aquarium. I hope I can remember how to reassemble this if I don't like the monstrosity I'm about to make. Yeah. Oop. All right. This kind of looks like Africa, but flipped. No, no, looks like Africa. This is the orientation of Africa. Well, that's kind of cool. Now I want it, I want it like that, I think. No, no. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of cool. Is it kind of cool? I can't see it. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. I like it, but here's the thing. I've built it too far over. I think that this actually wants to be at about the one third line, and right now it's closer to the one fifth line. So I need to move everything over maybe four inches. I'm gonna do that by dragging, and there's gonna be some screeching sounds of the glass. Apologies. No! Oh, it's so much worse than I thought it would be. Surely I've ruined it. Surely I've ruined it. I mean, I kind of ruined it, but it's not bad. It's not bad. So now I just need to fill in this back little section. Uh, now I, I want this to kind of grab the eye, so maybe I have the back section retreat a little bit in the background. So I don't want everything to be a solid wall. I want some stuff closer than others. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, maybe I want one more piece. One more jagged piece. Like that. Doesn't look good, but some something will something will look good I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to look at whether or not I actually want any of this wood whether or not this is too dominant a structure for wood to be involved. The question is, how am I gonna jam it in there? It's basically what I was thinking is something. Kind of like this. I I actually like that. So I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it um, with substrate. So that's how we'll that's how we'll bridge this gap. Now, hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe I want this piece instead. Because it's not supporting anything anymore. Maybe I want something that's a little bit more rugged sticking out. Yeah. I think that looks shockingly good. I'm not going to say it looks good, but it looks shockingly good. To fill up the substrate, I'm going to use my Rachel O'Leary, O'Leary, my Rachel O'Leary uh, mug that says fish panel. Um, there's a little bit of water in it, so I'm going to go pour that out, and then I'm going to start scooping up some aqua soil. So be back. Before we move to the next step, I want to show you what's happening in this tank from a different angle. So you can see back here that'll end up being aqua soil. Yeah. There's a little bit of space in the front for other things. Maybe I could put a little bit of Anubius there or there. And then this whole area will be sand. 
there'll be something, something growing right there. So yeah, I'm feeling good about this. I mean, it's kind of a weird setup, but I'm feeling pretty good. So let's get into it. You can tell that I'm lying because my voice keeps shooting up. It's gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be pretty good. <laughs> um, it might be pretty good. I think it'll be pretty good, but I am a little bit nervous. This is a little bit stressful. All right, so while I was gone, I got an emergency supply. I filled up my Rachel O'Leary mug with uh, little pieces of lava rock. Lava rock I use a lot in aquascaping to fill in little holes and to support rocks at weird angles. I don't know why I didn't think of using it earlier, but looking at all the holes in between my, la or my, uh, my petrified wood, words just escaped me for a second, looking at all the spaces between my petrified wood, I don't want aqua soil pouring out of everything, so I'm going to try to block those a little bit with lava rock. It's not going to do it perfectly, but it'll get it a little bit better so that aqua soil doesn't pour absolutely everywhere. Because I want to try to contain the aqua soil behind this setup so that I can have a sand substrate at the base. So, oh gosh. Oh no. Hmm, <laughs> how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this without disassembling everything? That's the question. Just throwing rocks at glass now, like a lunatic. And since I don't have any tweezers with me, I'm just gonna jam these rocks into place using a stick. So yeah, right now, these are literally just little barricades. And they have no structural value in the aquarium. Uh, they are just to block off these little holes, to stop aqua soil from pouring absolutely everywhere. And We'll never know how effective it is, but my guess is that it's marginally effective. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do a whole lot, but it might do something. All right, let's get to pouring this aqua soil. Anything coming through the front? Since hopefully nothing's coming through, I'll rotate it and show you the exciting bit, which is the pouring of aqua soil. That's the kind of quality content that you should subscribe to this channel for. The pouring of aqua soil. All right. So the important thing as I build this up is I wanna have enough soil back there that I can plant my, uh, my stems but I don't want the aqua soil to come up above my hardscape because I actually want the stems to be emerging from behind the hardscape. That way uh, you're not seeing the base of stems. Stems can be pretty, pretty gnarly at the base um, because stems start to lose their leaves uh, when the leaves are not exposed to light. So the plant's interest is to only have leaves at the top. So the base of the stems often looks a little bit ratty. So um, I pr probably want maybe an inch and a half, um, an inch and a half of, or of space between the top of my substrate and the back on the front of my scape. So yeah. I'm also gonna use a paintbrush to kind of brush these little bits back. Yeah. Smooth out my, my aqua soil on the back. I'll show you again what I'm doing. So you see how it's sitting comfortably behind where my aqua soil or where my hardscape lives. Um, that should be a good look. Now, the, my lava rock has done a pretty good job. There's only this little section that escaped. When I fill the tank, that might change though. Um, that very well might change. But that's a problem for later. Now in terms of my sticks, 
The other problem is that these sticks uh, are going to want to float. So I've got to figure out a way to hold them down because these are not waterlogged. These are just little bits that were broken off. So how in the world do I contain them? I don't have an answer. <laughs> nope, that's not going to work. Um, I'm going to have to come up with a solution, and it's going to be lava rock. So I'll be back with some lava rock, and we're going to weight down these sticks. How does it look, by the way? Right now it's looking pretty crummy. We're going to make it look better though. Be back in a second. All right, I got my lava rocks. Now let's jam them back in there so that they support my sticks in aesthetically pleasing angles and also do a little bit to wedge them into place. How are we looking now? Does it look a little bit more appealing? It does look a little bit more appealing. So I need a little bit more up at the top. A little something up here. I want them jammed back there, maybe? Yeah. I can see that working. I can see it working. It doesn't mean that it will work. But I can imagine it working. I can envision a path where that works. How does that look? That, that looks okay. I am shocked at how okay that looks. I feel really good about this actually. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty great. So now I'm going to add some sand as the final finishing measure uh, before we move on to our plants, which, oh, our plants. So I've just got some white sand here. I'm just going to pour a little bit in. Now, there's a trick when it comes to your substrate, and it's something that it took me a long time to learn, and that's that you don't want too much of it. Uh, your tank actually looks best when you just have a very, very thin layer of substrate at the front of your aquarium. Now, if you're using aqua soil all the way through, you do need a fair amount of aqua soil, maybe an inch, inch and a half, so that your plants can properly root. But if you're using sand, you don't need much at all. You just need enough to get up to the line of the silicone. And that's it. Uh, that's really all you need. So let's see if I can flatten this out a little bit. Make our little, little aquascape look nice and appealing. Now, does it... I don't think it needs anything else. I was debating back and forth of whether or not it needs a little, uh, a little rock right here to balance out that empty section, but I don't think so. I think we're okay. You guys may disagree with me, uh, and that's okay. You're allowed to think that I am bad at this and that you would do better. That's totally okay, and it's possible. Um, it's very possible that you would do better than me at this. Um, this is kind of, it's art, so there's no wrong answers, which is one of the lovely things about scaping. Um, there are aquascaping contests, for sure, uh, where someone will tell you whether or not you did a good job or not. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you enjoy the aquarium that you build. Um, there are rules. There are certainly rules for aquascaping. Um, and it's helpful to know them so that you can intentionally break them. Uh, but you don't need to. At the end of the day, your aquarium is a really, really personal, personal project. It's something that lives in your house. Um, it's not something that you're probably going to be taking outside of your house. So ultimately, it's something that's kind of just for you. So do what makes you happy. That's my, my little Bob Ross moment of, you know, there's no like mistakes in aquascaping. Um, it's just kind of what you want it to be. 
So, knowing that, this is, uh, this is my Aquascape. I'm pretty pleased with it. Honestly, I'm surprised at how good it looks. Um, I know I've said that a bunch. Maybe I have very low self-esteem. <laughs> um, but I really love this. I think this is really great. It's got a little bit of room for some plants, but not much. This is a really hardscape dominant aquarium. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you what plants I'm gonna use. Some of my plants might come from this 150. I might take a piece of Anubius, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Most of my plants are gonna come from this tank. This tank was uh, set up during a live stream that I did about a month ago. Uh, the lights are starting to go dim, so it's a little bit dark. We'll make a full video on it soon enough. But the, uh, the plants were donated by LRB Aquatics. Um, so that's the third channel that I want to shout out is LRB. Uh, and actually, why don't you set up your own aquascape? You've got some great plants. I mean, I can attest, they're really great plants. Uh, so set up your own, do this at home. Um, I'm gonna loot a little bit of what's in this tank, just a little bit. So little, little trimmings of stems, I'm not gonna ruin this tank, but I'll get just enough that I can set up my six gallon. So let's do that. Did I say let's do that? That's, that's not what I meant. Let's do that later. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock. I've got to edit this video and post it. So let's plant this tank in a live stream. On Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to plant this tank. It's part of my uh, weekly series right now called uh, Stay at Home and Aquascape. So that way we can all collaborate on this tank's final step. You can tell me what you think of the tank so far, any changes you'd like to see, and then we'll plant it and I'll answer some questions. So with that, I want to thank Rachel for suggesting this. This was really, really fun. I'm happy with how this tank looks. And I'm going to also show you a few close-ups of the tank before we go, so you can get a feel of what this tank really looks like. Bye.